Right. Well, so there, there are a variety of ways to raise NAD. Um, and this list is not exhaustive, but I'll, I'll talk about what ones we know of that have been really tested ex, um, fairly extensively. Uh, so you can raise NAD levels just by taking uh, nicotinic acid or niacin. And uh, so niacin has been used for decades to lower cholesterol. And uh, the only side effect is flushing. Uh, you feel a little bit warm. Um, there are slow release versions. That will raise NAD. And actually there are some of us, myself included, that are entertaining the possibility that the benefits you get uh, are in part because it also raises NAD. Uh, but in head-to-head in -head studies that I've read, mm -hmm. niacin won't raise NAD levels the way some of these other molecules do. Um, and I think the reason is that niacin is just a, a tiny part of the NAD molecule. Uh, and so, you know, let me think of an, an analogy. It'd be like saying, uh, I can build a house out of bricks, but if you don't bring the mortar and the windows and the doors and the roof, uh, you, it's going to be a lot harder. Um, and so the windows and, and the roof come in with molecules like NR, which is nicotinamide riboside, and NMN, which is NR but with a phosphate group added. So now you've got more of the house built in, and you're almost at NAD. Um, and so we're getting closer. And uh, so there, there's, there's a debate, it's, uh, it's a bit of a silly debate, which is better NR and NMN. In mice, I can tell you that, that both work uh, well to improve the health and the lifespan of mice. We've done a lifespan of, of NMN, we haven't, uh, we're repeating it, looks good. NR is published that it extends the lifespan of old mice. So they're both great. It's really, uh, I, I think it's semantics to say that one is you know, 10 times better than the other. It's just not, not the case.